sandy beaches, flamenco, and world-famous buildings like the Alhambra. This is but one side of Spain, for the country on the Iberian Peninsula has so much more to offer. An abundant wildlife full of surprises and spectacular wonders of nature. From the depths of the ocean to deep into the interior. From the swelteringly hot south to the green north and its rugged mountain world. It's almost impossible to find a larger biodiversity anywhere else in Europe. Between Galicia and the Basque Country lies a completely different and unknown Spain. Seas of clouds surge against the Cantabrian mountains in the north of Spain. Humid air masses from the Atlantic accumulate along the almost 500 kilometer long rock barrier. This is why northern Spain is not always blessed with sunshine, but rather with another, no lesser important property. The region thanks its lush green vegetation to the frequent precipitation. The weather holds no sway over the animals, and rain is certainly no reason to stop a good romp. This brown bear mother keeps a watchful eye on her young. She is aware that danger lurks everywhere. She raises her offspring completely alone. The males live solitary lives. Should the male bear discover the young, he would probably kill them to be able to pair with the mother. Mother bear is aware of the threat. If she wants to bring up her cubs successfully during now and the next few months, she has to steer clear of the adult males. Although they first saw the light of day in a den just last winter, the little ones have to adopt a brisk pace in order to keep up with their mother. That all's clear. After hibernation, the male is simply interested in finding something to eat. The annual volume of precipitation here is around 2,000 millimeters, twice as much as in the UK, but even the most persistent rain moves on eventually. Bears never faced extinction in northern Spain and have evolved into a subspecies of their own, the Cantabrian brown bear. Around 140 of them currently live here, making them Western Europe's largest bear population. Nonetheless, poaching and incest remain a threat. This mother has but one cub with her, and as brown bears rarely rear solitary cubs, it's quite possible that a male bear has attacked and decimated the little family. As with all brown bears, they enjoy a mainly vegetarian diet. The mother prefers fresh oak leaves, while her youngster is more of a roots and tubers fan. It's amazing how the otherwise ponderous animals managed to wander around the steep terrain with such apparent ease. As with most single children, the bond between mother and child seems to be especially close. For the little one, his environment is full of wonder. At an age of just four months, he has more than enough time to discover the world around him. Ah, 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 ah. 
The intimate connection is not for all eternity. The mother will spend about two years together with her cub, then she will drive him away from her side in order to mate again. But until then, the little bear has a lot to learn. The rugged slopes of his home are quite a tough school to attend. The Cantabrian mountain range spreads from the Basque country in the east to Galicia in the west. The Picos de Europa National Park is doubtlessly one of Spain's most spectacular regions. Small mountain villages are embedded in this majestic landscape. Villages like Mogrovejo. Here, time appears to have stood still. Aquilino Campoyo Guerra is a mountain farmer in the Picos de Europa, as were generations before him. He uses traditional work methods to this day and is specialized in cattle farming. I became a farmer from the day I helped my father with the cows when I was a child. Before I took over the farm, I spent five years as a truck driver. My father retired and my brothers were not interested in farming, so I now run the business. I like being my own boss, even though it's hard work, but I don't have any specified hours to adhere to and I've liked cows ever since my childhood. For them, today is a very special day. For the first time this year, Aquilino sends them out into the fresh, lush meadows. At last, free of the confinement of the stalls and into nature. Aquilino should be satisfied. The sumptuous grass ensures larger milk yields so that the calves grow up healthily. An intact nature is essential for the mountain farmers who can then live from their cattle. Last winter saw many trees snap and die. A welcome chance to collect as much firewood as possible to prepare for the next cold season. You have to be as tough as leather if you call the mountains your home. No hustle and bustle here. Nature dictates the rhythm. And this means that humans have to be proactive. Unfortunately, in idyllic mountain regions such as this here, almost only the elderly remain, as the youth can find much better future prospects in the towns. Many villages lose their inhabitants. As a mountain farmer, Aquilino receives government grants. He will remain living here at the foot of the majestic peak of the Picos de Europa. The Cantabrian mountains are interspersed with an abundance of rivers and streams. The banks are full of life in spring. The Asturian fire salamander is the only one of its kind with a complete yellow coloring. Just like all of his relatives, he has an incredible appetite. And you can't beat a decent portion of worms. The earthworm thinks it's being really clever and soon understands the folly of his ways. The fat snack should keep the salamander's battery going for a few days. This dipper had a lot less luck with his food search.
Most of the streams of the Cantabrian mountains flow north. If the salamander would let himself get carried away, he would at some point arrive somewhere in the Atlantic. One of the particularities of the northern Spanish coastline are the so-called rias, narrow ocean bays that cut their way through to the interior. Memories of Scotland or Ireland abound, as Spain is so unexpectedly diverse. Even in their traditional music, one can make out the influence of the Celts. At the moment, very few international tourists care to visit Asturias' green coast. It's more the summer haunt of hot and bothered Spaniards from the heart of the country. Then Galicia, Spain's westernmost region. Here is also the notorious Costa da Morte, the coast of death. This is Pethaberos territory, home of the goose barnacle collectors. One of them is Francisco José Suto Barrero, but everyone calls him simply Paco. I've always been attracted to the sea, though not professionally. As a child, I often came here fishing with my father. We used to collect worms as a lure, but also goose barnacles. Maybe I made my choice back then. I've now been collecting goose barnacles for seven years. And this is arduous and very risky. Firmly attached to the rocks, they have to be detached by hand. Paco's workplace is the dangerous wave-whipped shoreline of the Atlantic. Even the slightest inattentiveness can be fatal. instincts are attuned to waves. Seven years in this profession have sharpened Paco's senses. He is always on guard. Only those that respect the rhythm of the seas can successfully brave the elements. But not everyone can. Sometimes tragic accidents occur, as these memorials on the Costa de Morte testify. I do get scared sometimes. I knew some people who died while working as goose barnacle collectors. Sometimes you just get into perilous situations. It all happens so quickly. You slip and smash your head on one of the rocks, or you underestimate the power of a wave and get taken out to sea by it. It's easy to get killed in this job. Paco is aware of the risks every day when he is out there, yet still he sees his profession more as a passion than a job. After work, the yield has to be examined and sorted. In order to keep stock stable, the collection of barnacles has to be strictly regulated. They may not have the appearance, but they actually belong to the family of crustaceans. Although not exactly pretty, they are classified as the most expensive delicacy of the Atlantic. In restaurants, gourmets spend horrendous sums for the bizarre seafood. quiet days, the rugged cliffs merely allow us to imagine with what power the Atlantic shapes Spain's northern coastline.
just a few miles from the sea, the peaks of the Cantabrian mountain range seemingly reach for the sky. In the meantime, spring has also arrived in all its splendor in the higher regions. It can be seen and heard. Two blue throats are vociferously defending their territory. It ensures them food and habitat. Reasons enough to keep others at bay by singing. Mother Bear now finds vitamin-rich blossoms and grasses. Her offspring prefer basking in the warm sunshine. The work for the protection of the bears has until now ensured that the impressive animals can continue to wander around undisturbed. The immense diversity of the Cantabrian mountains flora is unique in the entirety of Western Europe. Columbine, daisies, The blue iris and countless orchids can be found in many areas. Butterflies are especially fond of this attractive food supply. The picos are a magnet for around 150 species. One of the largest and rarest of them is the mountain Apollo. His proboscis enables him to absorb the nectar of the thistle blossoms with ease. Without regular mowing, this colorful habitat would be lost. The flower meadows would turn into brushland. Spring is my favorite season. I can leave the cows in the meadow, there's less work to do, and the weather is nice. Aquilino has waited for quite some time to do the spring mowing. In the winter, he feeds the mown grass as valuable hay to the cows. Apart from a few small villages, the mountains of northern Spain are almost completely deserted. The best conditions for an unspoiled and species-rich nature. When night falls, light-shy creatures begin to stir. All senses sharpened and wide awake. The bank vole notices that something is afoot. It's best to go. No matter how elegant and silent the nocturnal genet may be, the bank vole was faster. The genet has only recently become a mother. Her offspring were born in a tree hollow about nine weeks ago, and the little ones are waiting to be suckled. Although they are already quite big, they still need their mother. The males have hardly anything to do with the rearing, While suckling one of her young, the mother devotes her time intensively to fur care, a sign that she is completely relaxed. One rarely gets to see a Janet. They lead a hidden life 
protected by the cloak of night. To be able to provide her offspring with milk, the mother has to catch prey on a regular basis, which is why she is off again on the hunt. It will take about another week before the cubs can leave the protective den themselves. One can see by the way the female moves, Janets belong to the group of viverids. Patiently, she moves into position. Who knows, perhaps she will manage to catch the bank vole by dawn. The coast of northern Spain is around two and a half thousand kilometers in length. Plenty of room for seabirds. Their day on the coast of Galicia begins with hectic hustle and bustle. There are around 16 types of seagull in Europe. Surprisingly, the Mediterranean gulls don't have their biggest Spanish breeding colony in the Mediterranean south, but here in the north. Most of their chicks have hatched, just recently too, as one can see by their fluffy down dress. As precocial birds, seagull youngsters can give you a run for your money as soon as they've hatched. As they are so advanced in their development, their energy demands are correspondingly high. The chicks have to be cared for, and it's time for the older birds to join the hunt. The birds keep a lookout for fish in groups. Gulls always know where they can find something edible. They can reach 30 years of age and more. Time enough in which to become an experienced fish catcher. As no predators pose a threat on the remote coastal rocks, they often leave their young behind. Before long, they begin to feel hungry. Eventually, the waiting comes to an end. Almost all gull species have a red mark at the end of their bill. Instinctively, the chicks rub against this to beg for something to eat. This in turn stimulates the older bird to regurgitate food, although this does not guarantee that all of the young will receive their share. The little ones are confused. Where's my share then? They have to be fed several times a day. Now at last, the snack bar is open. Not a single morsel will be wasted. The ocean provides them with sufficient nourishment, but first, it has to be found. Paco's profession requires physical exertion. It's not something for whips. But whether or not one can work like this until old age is questionable. The big goose barnacles fetch the best prices, and they can only be found on the islands off the coast. A close watch is being kept on his slow progress. Nowadays, it's really hard to earn anything from collecting goose barnacles. I always make light of it by saying that I don't really live from my job, but rather from my wife's. It was a lot easier some three or four years ago, but today it's impossible to feed a family on it. For one, the prices have sunk considerably. 
With a ferrada, an iron shovel, Paco removes the sessile crustaceans from the rock. Then a quick peek into the next crevice, thereby carefully evading the next wave. Paco knows the rhythm. Collecting goose barnacles is definitely one of the most dangerous jobs on Earth. Mysterious shadows of powerful beings make their way through the vast expanse of the Atlantic. The scary basking shark is a giant of up to 10 meters in length the world's second largest fish, but he is fortunately harmless. With his barn door-sized mouth, he filters exclusively plankton out of the water. His name is derived from his elongated pupils, the cat shark. Compared with most of his relatives, he is more of a lightweight. Sharks have existed for more than 300 million years, long before dinosaurs walked the earth. They therefore belong to the most primordial species of fish living in the seven seas. Porpoises can be found on many of the coasts of the Atlantic. They belong to the most prevalent whales of the northern hemisphere. Related to dolphins and just two meters in length, they are also one of the smallest species of whale. But their curiosity belies their stature. Talking of stature, the sperm whale. He is at home in all oceans. With a length of up to 20 meters and a weight of around 50 tons, he is the biggest predator on Earth. He can bind extremely large amounts of oxygen in his blood, enabling him to make do with one strong breath for up to two hours. Giant squids are often prey for sperm whales when they dive into greater depths. This relative of the squids is not large and doesn't live in great depths. A fin seam keeps the body exactly in position. The sepia is just around 50 centimeters long and likes to hang out in shallow coastal waters. They attach their eggs to the ground with their endogenous glue. This prevents the current from washing the eggs away and at the same time supplies them with large amounts of oxygen. The genitals of squids can be found between the tentacles. This makes it difficult to ascertain whether mating is affectionate or more of a fight. Rare insights into the underwater world of the Atlantic. The few people who decide to move to North Spain's coastal region usually have the same destination, Santiago de Compostela, the capital of Galicia. The old, time-honored cathedral is the objective of all pilgrims that have wandered along the way of St. James. The joy at their arrival could be seen in their faces. The ultimate pilgrimage is nonetheless probably the most famous milestone, the zero-kilometer mark at Cabo Finisterre. 
In the old belief, it was considered to be the end of the world, as legend will have it. Not far away from the end of the world, Packer relaxes by doing a spot of weekend angling. To enjoy the ocean without getting wet, what luxury. Angling is a chance for him to keep in touch with the past. I was born in La Coruña, close by the sea. My father was an angler, but not professionally. We used to go angling a lot back then. When I was 19 and had to leave to go to university, yes, that was hard for me to live without the sea. The people on the coasts between Galicia and the Basque region have always lived with and from the sea. But that which makes Spain's north so unique is the direct clash of the Atlantic and high mountain ranges, the Picos de Europa. The highest peak in the national park stretches some 2,600 meters into the sky. Sailors returning home used to see the mountain peaks long before they saw the coastline. This is how they got their name, Picos de Europa, the pinnacles of Europe. Beyond the tree border, a completely different world begins, a world that appears barren and colorless but far from it. Difficult to find, but the search is worth it. Wall creepers add color to the gray monotony and are something quite special. Only slightly larger than sparrows, they have chosen the rough mountain world as their environment. Ornithologists from all over the world are enthused by their ruby-red plumage. The prey spectrum of the wall creepers comprises mainly insects that they look for in the rock face. With success. When the rocks warm up during the day, the insects that reside there become more active the female knows only too well how to use her tweezers like Bill. Unnoticed, she's being watched closely from someone who appears to be very impatient. The female has cunning plans for the captured butterfly. For weeks now, most food was not meant for her, but for him. The hungry young bird flies to the food pickup. But nothing doing this time. The indignation is huge. The female wants to lure her offspring out of her territory to help him begin an independent life. This is upbringing war creeper style. The young bird is certain to find his own territory. It's hardly squalid around here. And food is plentiful too. Parts of the mountain range were declared a protective reserve back in 1918, 
and the national park has been its present size since 1995. From the mountains of Asturias and Cantabria, we move on eastwards to the Basque Country. The permanent exchange of ebb and flow is especially strong on this coast. In some places, the tidal range can be as much as five meters. This is why, during the flow, water is pressed into the wetlands of the interior. A surprising animal species has settled there. Red deer live in the Basque country not only in forests, but also in the midst of reeds. These protect them from enemies and also provide nourishment. Autumn. While little egrets and white storks take rest here before flying on to their wintering areas in Africa, it's anything but peaceful back at the deer's place. The rutting season is in full swing. It's now all a case of respect and dominance between the bulls. The lower ranking animals are not interested in the disputes. Seems harmonious, but looks can deceive. There's excitement in the air. The animals incur surges of elation and testosterone levels increase. The bulls require patience when mating, as a doe is only able to conceive for a few hours per year. With a time frame this short, it's even more important that a bull demonstrates that he is nothing less than, excuse the phrase, top dog. Whoever gives way first, loses. But neither of them even considers this. Each of them has a body weight of 150 kilos. The bulls are evenly matched. Both of them deserve to pass on their genetic heritage. But only the most tenacious has a chance of finding the female's approval. Bitter confrontations such as these sap energy levels considerably. After ratting, the bulls will have lost 20% of their body weight. And in the end, the winner lets his competitor know who's boss. And the ladies too. It's done. He has successfully passed on his genes. His competitor shattered. Fortunately, one of northern Spain's abundant rain showers cools down tempers. But the rutting season is not over yet. The next confrontation is just around the corner. Back to the Picos de Europa. In the autumn, the annual cattle market takes place, a very important event. Aquilino and the other mountain farmers present their cows, hope for a few good deals, and look forward to get-togethers with friends and colleagues. Those present 
with a man or animal. Accept the rainy weather with patience and composure. As it stands, Aquilino can still take care of his farm alone, but for how much longer? Who will then take over once his time has come? My sons are studying and will eventually graduate. Young people don't want to be farmers anymore. This is why my farm will just disappear, like so many others. In the meantime, most people in Mogrovejo are now in retirement. Once they worked in agriculture, now they work in their gardens and play cards. But Aguilino is not even thinking of retirement. He wants to see many generations of calves come and go before he's ready. Nowhere in Spain is autumn quite as beautiful as it is in the Cantabrian mountains. It's time to prepare for the approaching winter. The rose hips have to be harvested quickly. Whilst trees reduce their metabolic processes and jettison their leaves, mushrooms literally shoot up out of the ground. For some, they are the last delicacies of the year. The odd nibble doesn't harm a mushroom, as long as the wind disperses its spores. Sea air draws across the land and severe weather conditions approach. The first snow of the year has already fallen in the mountains. The high mountain region is the kingdom of Cantabrian chamois. They represent a subspecies that one can only find here. The females live in a group together with their kids. The bucks usually go their own ways. But in November, other regulations apply, as then it's the mating season. The buck is completely focused on the females. But they observe a rather relaxed attitude. the buck remains on the ball. His hormone devils play havoc with his patients, but the ladies are not yet ready to mate. But one can only try. Well, that got off to a damp start. Resigned, the buck leaves the group alone. Time is now of the essence as winter is already in sight. Snow and ice define the climate in the mountains for the coming months. Hardly anything seems to move, but those who want to survive must now become active. The jay collects the last remaining morsels. The acorns that he doesn't immediately eat serve as a reserve for bad times. The jay has an incredible memory and is later able to find most of his hiding places. A clever lad. Whilst winter forges ahead, 
it claims its first victim. A group of ravens have discovered a perished wild boar. Hunger and cold had obviously weakened the animal beyond help. Ravens often search for carrion when food sources are scarce. Others also appear interested in the feast and observe the goings-on keenly. The situation at the carcass appears calm, but trouble is not far away. Griffin vultures. The huge birds know that there is enough here for them up for grabs. They maintain their distance and stoically endure the jibes of the ravens, but they are hungry. The ravens slowly lose control. Time to depart. Soon, nothing will hold the vultures back anymore. remain in the background. They have already filled their bellies. Anyway, the snow provides a surface for the very best sliding experiences. Playfulness is a typical raven trait. But there's something that is much better than playing in the snow to snuggle up to one's partner. It's soon mating season for ravens. Just a few feet away, the Battle of the Buffet is still underway. Griffin vultures can easily weigh as much as eight kilos, and this with a wingspan of almost three meters. Reason enough not to mess with these guys. For the vultures, winter is like a well-stocked refrigerator, and there's always carrion around one can wrangle over. The cold season will soon be over. The winter thaw is underway. Slowly at first, then ever faster. Spring can no longer be constrained. And once again, nature gathers momentum. And so, another new generation makes its way, awkwardly at first, into a life full of wonder in Spain's north, the homeland of Aquilino and Paco. I'd never want to swap. I have my friends and my family here. I don't like towns at all. I like nature. The sea is an important part of my life. You look towards the horizon and simply lose yourself in it. 